So in my early days of 3D printing, heated beds were still kind of a new thing and for example attaching a thermistor to the bed was still something you basically had to figure out on your own. So in this video I'm going to show you the E3D like way of attaching a thermistor to an aluminum bed which I found to be the most reliable and most accurate way of doing it. So again E3D like means the exact same way the E3D V6 attaches a thermistor. Some people hate that, I know, but if you do it right once you'll never have to do it again. In my case I've got a PEI coated 4mm aluminum bed here that Sven Krause made for me. I put a link to his Facebook page in the description, that dude is crazy. What's going to be heating this 16 by 16 cm slab of aluminum is a 200 watt silicone heater powered from 12 volt to be drop in compatible to my big Mendel 90. At that wattage I usually recommend using an SSR but I know my printer can handle it. For this process you'll need a 1.5 or 2mm as well as a 2.5mm drill bit, an M3 tapping set, a short M3 screw with a flat or cap head, an M3 washer as well as the thermistor, in this case the classic Semitech one and some glass fiber sleeving from E3D. On the bottom where the heater is going to sit the aluminum bed has a 5 or 6 mm wide area on the side that is not covered by the silicone heater, that's what we want to use. If you're really feeling lucky, you could also install it sideways into the aluminum plate to save you a bit of space. The two holes, one for the thermistor's head, the other for the clamping screw, should be as closely together as you can get them without actually turning them into a single one. Typically that means 3mm from center to center. The blind hole for the thermistor should be as deep as possible without actually going all the way through. What I did here was to have it 2mm large most of the way down to give the sleeving a bit of extra space and then drill the last bit with 1.5mm to give the thermistor's head a good fit. The center hole for the M3 thread needs to be drilled to 2.5mm but it's a good idea to drill a smaller pilot hole first which helps in getting the hole to the exact size. Add a bit of lubrication, cutting oil or if you don't have anything else on hand WD-40 also works well enough and cut the thread preferably with a three part set which compared to a one piece tap are much easier to use and just seem to last forever. Deburring the holes, especially the one for the thermistor, is kind of important to keep the glass fibers leaving from fraying. Of course you should be using a countersink for this but a slightly larger drill bit is going to do the job almost as well. Now grab your thermistor, cut two pieces of glass fiber sleeving to length, slide them over and to get this next part right you might need to get a bit creative. Since this hole is shallower than the one in the E3D V6 it's even harder to get the sleeving in there properly while bending the legs over. So don't worry if you don't get the sleeving all the way up to the head on the first try, just get it as close as possible, pay attention to the head getting a good fit and tighten down the M3 screw until it holds the thermistor in place nicely but not so much that you can't slide the glass fiber around anymore. Then grab a pointy tool, a pair of tweezers or in my case the tip of a utility knife and shove that glass fiber sleeving into the hole as much as you can, just don't break the thermistor's legs off in the process. Then screw down that M3 screw all the way and try to keep the thermistor's legs together in the process. By the way, if you want to, you could also use some non-conductive thermal grease for the thermistor's head, but I found that tends to make more of a mess than actually helping with accuracy. Finally, check for shorts from the thermistor's legs to the aluminum plate. If only one side is shorted to the bed, it's not going to cause any issues immediately but might give you a headache in the long run so in that case I'd recommend refitting the thermistor just to make sure. To connect the thermistor you can directly solder wires to it and add a bit of heat shrink, the thermistor's legs never get warm anyways. Now people keep asking about this, yes the silicone beds come with an adhesive, just make sure the bed is clean and stick that genuine 3M adhesive on there. Make sure the bulge for the wires does get good contact that likes to get loose. The big orange cable is also a good spot to zip tie the thermistor's wires to, to give them a bit of extra strain relief. And that's it, I've probably made this video a bit longer than it needed to be, but I hope there is enough extra bits of information in there to make it worthwhile. Let me know in the comments what your own perfect thermistor mounting solution looks like. Thanks for watching, see you all in the next one.